episode, but a little bit of a hot take about uh, Essendon, okay. actually. Okay, and, um, So, let's be honest, right? I think if Brad Scott stays another year, some of those senior players, mate, they're going to be on the ass. They're going to want to quit the club, I reckon. Jeez. Like, I'm talking Nick Hind, you know, always the sub. Maybe even uh, even Sardis, a young guy, not getting a game. And uh, Sam Draper just got managed. Yeah. Well, we. You gotta say he's 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 oh he's gone. Oh, you gotta say oh he's gone because that's like because that's that's how that's they. The bit. That's, right, the, that's bit. the bit. Oh he's gone because that's what they said about Bailey Smith. Right, so. right. Well, he's uh, gone. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, here's the thing though about these yeah. comments, right? And hello everyone again. It's nice to be back. Yeah. Oh. Um, the comments he made <laughs> were such nuffy podcast comments, and <laughs> even <laughs> us as like amateur podcast guys mm. are allowed to give him a bit of shit for this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like just saying that. Senior players that aren't getting a game might leave. Yeah, it's just like Caleb Daniel, man. Like, come on, bro. Like, what's, such what's that guy la- need to do to get a game? It's such you know? lazy podcasting. It's kind of like when we don't watch the game and just try to talk about it. Like, exactly. that's pretty much what he did about the podcast. That's going to be us this week, mate. Let's be honest, man. We've, we've had a busy weekend. But true, you true. know what, man? It's good to be back in the old studio. Like, I love the new one. But this, you know, this is kind of like home. Bit of nostalgia. And uh, th- we've got to congratulate Dino formally on the pod. Daddy Dean has officially become a daddy. Officially a daddy, so, yeah. So, there we go, man. It's been a very busy month. That's it. Um, don't know how often I'll be on the pod, but hopefully as often as possible. So, it's, it's a welcome return. It's I a miss, welcome return. I miss your little, uh, your little quips and whatnot. You I'm know? ready to go. I've had a few locked and loaded for a couple of weeks. So <laughs> I love it, man. I'll, I'll, I'll try it. and unleash in spurts today. Yeah. We'll see how we go. Yeah. And this is also a little, um, little uh, name day surprise for, for Georgie. So, that's the reason why we couldn't uh, record um, with him. Uh, but happy name day, George. Happy name day, George. And I, I don't know if we're going to... Sh- Tell him about this until we upload. Just as a little surprise, a nice surprise for him. For him. Yeah, nice you know, just, just a little J up for him, you know. Ronya Pola to him. Yeah, Ronya Pola. He will not expect this. Christos so. Anesti to everyone as well. All exactly. the Greek happy, Orthodox, happy or Orthodox Easter. Christians. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah. Yeah. You want to yeah. jump into... Uh, we will, but I feel like you should take over the Adelaide game to talk about your boy, Jake the Snake Saligo. Jakey the Snake Saligo, <laughs> man. I've, look... I brought him up in my, uh, I brought him in my super coach draft. I've been trying to pedal this guy. Like I'm going, <laughs> like, Sol- come on, Saliga for this, Saliga for that. No one, no one was biting, right? No one bit the snake, right? <laughs> so, no one was biting for the snake. But then this week, man, he went crazy. The snake man. did the biting himself. The snake, the snake was, he was injecting the venom this week, man. Um, he looked good. Like the thing with him and what I enjoyed about him, I, for some reason, thought he was just this high energy player with not much polish, but when he gets the ball, he measures himself. You know what I mean? He measures the situation. He'll stop. He will make a little kick. Even if the kick's not 100% accurate all the time, you can see that this dude has time and space in the contest, which, you know, that's what the best inside mids, you know, that's what they do. So, right. yeah, Jake the Snake, man. Dare I say he was more Laird than Laird was on Ooh, Thursday night. Uh, definitely, and that's no disrespect. Definitely on, definitely on this day, he was more Laird. No disrespect to Laird, who yeah. also had a pretty decent game, but yeah. like he was looking more like Laird out there than Laird usually does. Yeah, because we are we we are Laird enjoyers. I, I'm definitely a Laird yeah, enjoyer, yeah. but now, man, Jake the Snake might be the premier midfielder that, we're, that they're building around, you know, and he, he should be, to be honest with you. He's well, still young. And it's interesting to me because last year when they weren't playing Crouch, mm. it was the whole like they want to get more legs in the midfield. Yeah. And he wasn't getting such... A role that he is right now. No, no. But now this year when Crouch is back, now he's in there. Yeah, that's it. That's so it. The, the 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 mix is you know the, I think they're kind of getting it right, man. You know, and I think their coach is Nix. Is that his name? Yeah, yeah. I think Nix. He um, he's had a slow start. Tried mm. a few different things. Yeah, the wins weren't coming, and now Adelaide seems to say, you know what. We figured it out, a bit of a mic maneuverage from Matthew. Yeah, I know. I know. Look, this, <laughs> like, you know, we digress a bit from the game, but this, we're trying the new mics and the lack of movement that I can have on these couches because I'm a mover. And can I just quickly know? comment on the mics, by the way? Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. As someone who hasn't been in the new studio yet, it looks fantastic. So well done. Anyone who's not watching on YouTube, I recommend you just check it out. Yes. Very probably the most pleasant on the IAFL podcast from a fan I've ever seen. Mm. Um, I think there's some there's some a couple things that we've got to do to sort of make it look that bit better, in my opinion, but legit. Oh, like, look, it's, it's up there. I see other AFL fan channels from teams mm. or just general pods and ours honestly looks up there as yeah, one of the best ones. It feels like a radio um, show is the way I feel like when I, I'm in there, I feel like I'm in a, you know, in a professional setup. I will say really cool. I do feel a bit like Luke Beveridge getting roasted in the post game presser. With the mics yeah. just in my face right now. I feel like I'm under fire. <laughs> true, true. I feel like I'm under fire. We'll get to that. The pressure's on, mate. The pressure's on me right now, but yeah. it's okay. It's a, mm. it's a good environment. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Um, but yeah, back to the game. So I feel mm. like Adelaide was 
trying different things starting the year and they've just realized, you know what? Let's do the old basic throw plays in their best position mm. and the winds are coming. So mm. you guys kind of wrote them off on the, on the pod a few weeks ago we and did, rightfully so at the time. Uh, yeah, no, and that's what I was thinking. But now we have to and slow won, our roll. And they've won three of their last four and the narrow loss was to Essendon, right? Mm. Yes. They, yeah. Yep. They so the two, if you, when you look at those games, right? So Essendon, was it Carlton, which is the other close win? And Port, you would have ticked away at least two as losses. But now, two out of the three are wins. I would have bet, yeah, at the time, I would have said Essendon, you'd win at home. Mm. And Carlton and Port, no way. Yeah, no, exactly. But they've won two out of the three of those and then beating North. So that's Mm. three out of four. And they're back in it now. So they're currently sitting two wins out of the eight. And I know Mm. it's a really hotly contested eight. So it's still unlikely that they'll get in. Mm. But good on them for getting the season back on track. Yeah, for sure. And another thing I want to say about them, right? They are clinical, man. Mm. Like, the, I think you look at the forward line and it makes sense. True. Tex Walker, highly skilled player. Rankin, highly skilled player. Rochelle, he has a few, you know, misses here and there, but he's, he's still he's a very highly skilled player. Yeah, he is. And Dawson, you know, a goal scoring mid, pops in, gets a couple goals. Their, like, efficiency going forward mm. is killing teams because you look at Port's, you know, mm-hmm. the behinds. And I'm sure you got some stuff to say about Port because we know how Dino loves, you know, Port and, and Ken and the lads. Um, what do you got to say, mate? My thing is this with Port, right? Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to extend this to the last game of the round, which is Gold Coast. Mm. We're talking your local derbies here, right? For me, in these games, you cannot get blown out. And I know it's only 30 points in the end. So, like, you can look at it and say, okay, it wasn't a blowout. They just missed a lot of chances. But anyone that was watching that game would see that Adelaide was always winning that game. Yeah, They just looked the better team. They wanted it more. Mm. And you can look at the missed opportunity. Like, five goals, 18 is woeful. And correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't see rain on the TV. What's that? I didn't see rain. No, no, I don't think so. I didn't see sideways rain. No, no. I didn't see any of that. It wasn't like the Sydney derby. It wasn't like that game. No. This game was clean. This game was clean. So from memory, eighteen scoring opportunities Adelaide had. Port had eighteen behinds. That's All shocking. right, some of the players there like Boke zero goals three, mm. Burgoyne zero goals two, heaps of guys on zero one. Mm. It's just poor, yeah. and Port Adelaide just quietly have had a few disappointing losses. Like big mm. lead against Collingwood, threw it away. Yep, didn't show up to this game. I don't know about it, mm. man. My see, my thing with them, right? So the forward line obviously comes into question. But this week, there's going to be a few changes, right? So what's his name? So Charlie Dixon in this case, right? Didn't have a good game. Um, they're going to have Ollie Lord come back into the team at some point. I don't know if you remember him from last year, but the back end of last year, he was excellent. You know, he had a few good a, games. Yep. Yeah. Um, Finlayson as well, you know, um, depending on, you know, if they, if they see him fit to come back in, he mm. might come back in. So look, I think there's some, there's some changes to be made there. Todd Marshall, I believe, got injured. And George Yardas might have got injured as well. Yeah. So they've, there's going to be a big shift and a big shake-up. Will that, hopefully that will, you know, sort of hit, get the balance a bit better for him. Because, I don't know, Dixon trying to, you know, mark everything and not quite mm. having these best games, it's, it's not working. Yeah. And I think it just goes back to my other comment. Like, you're playing mm. Adelaide, mm. who on their best day and on your best day, you are the better team. This just tells me they didn't show up. They just weren't on it. Adelaide mm. wanted it more. Did it for Rory Sloan, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know what? We've gone enough without talking about the biggest talking point of the game, yep. which is the Rosy situation. Ooh, yeah, that's... Um, All right. Now, we've kind of joked on the pod many times about Ken Hinckley, Luke mm. Beveridge. These guys are cut from the same cloth, mate. Yeah, like old blokes, mate. Toughen up and get out there. This, Yeah, of. and this is a greater point I want to talk about, which is, I don't know, this year more than ever... There's such injury mismanagement going on. Mm. It's actually pathetic. Yeah. So you look at Libba, right? Libba, that incident a few weeks ago, he collapsed on the field and they let him keep playing. All right? Well, yeah, that's crazy. And then look, again, this week. This week. He looked dazed. You commented. We were watching it together. Yeah. And I said it as a joke, right? I said it as a joke. But then later on, it comes back as, oh, he actually, yeah, yeah. He, was, he was kind of a bit stuffed up. Exactly. So Connor Rossi. Mm. Clearly wasn't right all week. Mm. Everyone, including their own fans, are just saying, don't risk it. Yeah. And you know, this is... So, captain of the club, right? So, obviously, important player. But also, the player who relies on his burst Correct. as well. Maybe not relies, but burst is a big part of his game. Yep. So... Exactly right. And yeah. he did not look right from the get-go. Mm. Then he goes off for ages and they're not subbing him out. And he's mm. testing it. He's trying to run. Like, 
just call it. Exactly. Like, what have you got to gain by mm. pushing through mm. and then missing the next few weeks, yeah. which he's going to do now? And soft tissue injury. It's not like it's a... I know there's certain injuries that players can play it out, but this is, not, this is not one of them. Ridiculous. And another example is uh, Hopper from Richmond. Mm. This one could have just been chance, but he's come back a bit early from his knee mm. and then he's had an issue with... A th- Against soft tissue. Like, clearly mm. the leg wasn't conditioned enough. Like, he's yeah. like, okay, the knee's fine. Let me start going full intensity. Mm. What's, like, it's a long season. I know it's, there's other codes like soccer and that have longer seasons and basketball mm. for sure. But, like, you've got another week. It's one week. It's not going to change the course of your season to just mm. get your best players right. Yeah. Like, what, what do you, it's like, do you, would you rather have them for one week? Correct. You know, lose them for one week or lose them for five. Correct. And like, you can comment on the depth of certain teams like Sydney, for example. Luke Parker mm. has been good to go for two weeks, dominating the VFL. I know. Two 30-plus disposal Correct. games in the VFL in a row. And it's he's crazy. better off for it now rather mm. than forcing him into the first team where the intensity is higher, the demand mm. is higher, and potentially getting re-injured. You'd rather have Luke Parker in his prime in the second half of the year mm. than pushing it early. Mm. It wouldn't even surprise me if you did another week in the VFL, mate. Because that team what? is so good, man. And if you're, where are you going to put him? Correct. And if you're Port and you're the doggies, you need to just think long-term. You both mm. want to play finals. Mm. And now you're seriously compromising that, especially the dogs. 100%, yeah. So, I don't know. For me, that's just like, if it's a brutal sport. If you're not right, you're not a macho man for trying to play through it. Unless mm. it's like a like a finger or something where it's not, yeah. or if you know, it's, it's just a, a bit of pain or something. Yeah, or if it's a prelim final or a grand final. Different, different story. story. Different, different story. story. But this is round eight. Season's over after that if you lose. Yeah. This is round eight. The buys are coming up. Mm. Come on, man. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, shout out to the Crows. Shout out to the, the big showdown win. Yep. And now the another the next huge game that happened this week. The real reason George isn't on the pod. Exactly. I know we said name day earlier, but that was cap. That's this is because Georgie couldn't stand to talk about how amazing Nick Dacos's <laughs> clutch performance was and how the midfield the midfielders didn't step up. Cripper went to bed. What did he do, mate? He he he. he what did he do? Jeez. Yeah, no, he didn't have a good game, didn't man. Have a good he, game. he he um, didn't want any of that smoke. While she didn't have his greatest game either, got a lot of disposals, but wasn't efficient with it, as shown by a super coach score. I traded <laughs> him in the, the Malacca. But anyway, um, but look, that again, man, that was another fun game, bro. That was another fun game. Mm. You know, just momentum swings, three, four goal swings here and there. And eventually, uh, the former premiers come out on top. And you know what? Like, it's cliche to talk about it, but that winning goal from Dacos was insane. Like, such a hotly contested mm. ball up. Like you knew that one of the teams had to win this ball and not mm. to not only win it, but to get on the outside and finish like that on the run. It was just exquisite. Mm. And he had a similar goal. I don't know if it was in the first or second quarter. It was like foreshadowing, to be honest. And I remember the umpires being, how can you let this guy run run at it alone in this contest? Mm. It happened again. They didn't learn from their mistake, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And the funny thing is with that goal, that's probably like the... 25th best, you know, moment of his career. Mm. You would think any other player, that's the best moment of their career. But this dude just, yeah, he keeps shining in the right times, man. Like, it must be fun to be him, man. I'll tell you that. And that's the key point is like at the right times, like match winning mm. displays. Yeah. It's different than just having a good game. It's mm. that next level of just heroics. Exactly. Building exactly. the legacy, you know. Yeah. And, you know, the they do the, um, the traditional, you know, the typical pan the camera to dad yep. going crazy which is mad you know what I mean I got, uh, and he gave the up yours as well he did, he did. <laughs> you see that <laughs> Very. love um, it um, mm. let's talk a bit about Carlton for a second now yes. that George isn't here we can have an honest chat about it yep. not that and George isn't honest he's usually pretty level headed yeah but then there's certain things where I think he's a bit a bit deluded yeah. You know, a little bit like, you know, maybe not delude. Delude is not the <laughs> right word. That's that's too heavy a word. Sorry, Georgie. But like, you know, he uh, he thinks that certain things are bigger problems than what they are. He, you know, you know doesn't appreciate the, you know, what they do have sometimes. You know what it um, is as well? I think last year, mm. probably rightfully so, has given him and other Carlton fans the calmness to know that if and when they hit their peak, yep. which hopefully again will be in the finals, they are a very good team. Mm. So a few losses in close games isn't the end of the world. Yeah, but they've—I'll give them credit first, Carlton. They've been prime time television the last month. They have managed. every game has been a banger. Cardiac Carlton, mate. That Cardiac just, Carlton hasn't hasn't you know. Take it back a stopped. couple of weeks ago, the two point mm. loss to the Crows, right? Mm. Then they have a great game, beat the Giants. Yeah, high scoring games too, mind you. Yeah, true. Always true. around that hundred point mark, close mm. game is just what you want as a fan. Mm. Then they go ahead and they lose to Geelong. Again, a close game. Yep. And now this week they lose to Collingwood. Entertaining. Mate, mate, but 
They've Good lost for... three out of four. Yeah, that's... So, after being the team that always wins the close game, mm. they're not doing that this month. No, no. And, and what's it done to the ladder? It's put them in eighth. Yeah, no, I'm looking at that now. Jeez, man. Okay. Who now... would have thought, look, <laughs> can you remember round two or round one, whatever it was, when we were, you and Georgie specifically, not me so much, but you and Georgie were going crazy at Freo. And now they're the same points as and Carlton Essendon. Yep. and Essendon. And now Essendon are two points above because of the draw and Freo are above Carlton. Oh, no, sorry, not above. Same as Carlton. Correct. And Collingwood's marching forward. So they're going to be in the eight in no time. Mm. My the way. other teams aren't showing enough. So let's say the top nine teams are all pretty competitive at the moment. Mm. I still think Carlton aren't a danger to miss the eight. But what I'm saying is anyone who has intentions to win the flag, wants to make the top four, wants yeah. that double chance, yeah. they're not going to get it at this stage. Mm. They're oh. close. Don't get me wrong. They're a win away. I'm not yeah. not writing it off. But if you keep mm. having these close games and not mm. getting over the line, you pay for it later in the season. Yeah. That's funny because we're talking about those top six teams. I don't know if you remember mentioning us mentioning mm. on the previous pot or two. Yep. There was that top six teams that you know we think are guaranteed. Not the, not the case anymore, man. No. It's burst wide open by this round, which is mm. which is amazing to be honest. This is it awesome. Is. It's fun. Um, and look again, I think they can do it. They are a very good team. They're all close mm. games. Yeah, you can lose some of them. It's not the end of the world. Mm. But again, George says it all the time. You want the mm. points on the board. Mm-hmm. They're not getting them this month. That's so it. they need to get back on track. We'll talk about their matchup this week, which is another big one. Yeah, uh, they're playing Melbourne. Oh, <laughs> Thursday oh yeah, night. on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. They're playing Melbourne. So Ooh. again, they could lose again. Then they've lost four out of five. And then at what point are you like, shit, you just wait for the easy teams and then you beat them? Like no one's impressed by that. No, no. You know what no, I mean? No, so it's, it's not really filling us with any confidence it's interesting. for them going into the postseason. It's a very interesting um, state of play at the moment. I did mm. want to just say as well, Scott Pendlebury, man. <laughs> This guy, you'll have a few quiet weeks and you're mm. like, yeah, fair enough. He's getting old. Mm. And then he just has a few weeks where you're just like, how old's this guy again? <laughs> he's he's nuts, man. Mm. The th- he has certain like clearances and moments in games where you're just like, man, it's like... Class above. Yeah. It's, it's still... He's, it's the same bloke still. You know what I mean? Like, hasn't yep. aged. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you reckon he could probably go another season, man? And I don't want him to because then he'll probably beat Boomer Harvey's, you know, record. I don't care if anyone beats Boomer's record because it's not anyone's fault except those who Ex- didn't extend his contract yeah, nah. he could have kept going yeah true, he could have played true. 500 true, so let's true. yeah, yeah nah, don't let's, trigger let's, yeah, let's not let's not talk about that too much That's, don't trigger I, me, I, I, I know i have sorry sorry bro sorry bro. <laughs> i know i'm good at that um um uh, but yeah no great mm, win collingwood mm, they're well and truly back now yeah um, oh yeah got oh, no yeah. issues with them that's that's the the statement win i think yeah, yeah that's that's the one and mind you sorry just quickly actually mm. no mitchell no degoe yeah and my checks out now yes so their depth is being questioned and they're still just playing like next man up football, yeah. which is great. Yeah, and you know what? The guy who was the next man up was a uh, first gamer at 26, Lockie Sullivan. Mm. He looked fine out there, man. He looked like he looked very comfortable. I think he had eight score involvements in the end. How long has so, he been in the system? Because he looked very ready. Well, he's been playing VFL. I, th- I don't know if he's for Werribee. Yeah. Okay. Who it's, like he's been a captain for, I can't remember which, he's been a captain in the VFL for years, basically. Yep. So he's been, you know, building up his body, you know. He's also, uh, I think he was a, an electrician as well. So, you know, that's physical work as well. So, but, bro's ready to go. Yep. You know what I mean? So Love it. Mm. Um, mm. Next game. So, Sydney, um, very good win against mm. the Giants, considering it was a slow start. Yeah. Well, the, the story of the game for me was, you know, as soon as the rain hit, Sydney and their physical presence was just ready to go. Mm. And GWS... Partly to no fault of their own because they lost Tom Green early. Yeah. They lost they don't have Cornelio. Yep. Those are their top two inside mids. Mm. You know what I mean? So without those two, you're forced to put Pete Ling in there and a few other dudes, you know. Um, yeah, Kelly's getting time in there, Callahan's getting Callahan, time in there. Yep. You know, they're not those physical wet weather footy type dudes. Yeah. Let's be fair. And they're they're the guys you want on the on the dry day where yeah. they have that class. Correct. And it's yeah. one look at the box score here mm. and it says it all, right? So mm. Grundy dominated. Yeah, he had Heaney, like 11 tackles, Heaney which he there. loves. He, it's, yeah. it's weird. He's probably the most wet weather ruckman, ruckman. of all time. Yeah. He, like seriously, so. because he's, he's like calling card is the physicality of the contest. Yeah. He Doesn't provided. need the aerial presence so much. Nah, yeah. nah. Um, mm. So yeah, he's up there. Heaney, Warner, Goulden, Robottom. So basically the midfield and ruck just feasted. Exactly. exactly. Um, Can you imagine if you had Luke Parker to that? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. They're a good team, man. It's too much, man. Um. Jimmy Jordan's there as well. You know. Yeah, Jimmy Jordan. Taylor Adams doesn't even need to be on ball full time to have an impact. So yeah. 
Mm. You know, and then Haywood stood up four goals. What do you think of the Sydney forward line? Because they've got McLean, mm. Amati. Yep, they've got Logan. Haywood. Logan McDonald. As McDonald. Well. Yeah. It's, do you think it's good enough this year? Because no doubt they're a very good list and people have them in top four for a reason. Do you think it's actually good enough to win the flag? Mm. Or Look, like next Honestly, year? you know what? I don't think it really matters because mm. Collingwood's forward line, you can't tell me that's that much better. Like mm. Majacek and Jamie Elliott, guns, right? You know, under understated, you know, sort of star players in their role also. Mm. You know what I mean? They're not superstar. They're not like, you know, Charlie Kerno, Toby Green forward line type players, but they play their role really well. Yep. I feel like these, these guys can do something similar. You know, Haywood is amazing as a pressure forward right mm-hmm. i think he's very underrated then you have you know guys who can all take contested marks three dudes who can take contested marks that's the big thing for me mm. yep and then who are the other small guys weeks you know papley papley oh no they're no nah, their forward line's fine their mm-hmm. forward line's fine there's there's your answer yes they can win with that forward line yep and their defense is it's got all the elements you want a bit of dash yeah. bit of aerial presence mm. and so on yeah Loki McCartan's having a great season you know he's he's been the sort of the physical guy back there you mm. know um, and then you know Blakey does a bit of everything you know what I mean he yeah. does a bit of intercepting he can you know defend bigs yeah. it's not an over-reliance on Lloyd anymore like they've got no. Florent mm. Roberts Roberts yeah Roberts is a fine kick of the footy yeah. as well they've just they've got a stack team still there yeah and he's fine He's fine. So oh, well done to them. Yeah, um, build up that team nicely with the assistance of the AFL Academy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I digress. Um, look, yeah. I think we've kind of said it all about GWS in regards to you know mm. the outs that they had. That kind of that was the game, really. Yeah. I think. Um, would I be concerned for them? You know, a little bit because it shows that their inside grunt depth is not quite there with the best mm. teams. Yeah. Let's be fair. Like. And it, Makes sense when people have just mm. been picking the players that they can't afford to extend pretty much every year. No, you're right. Taranto, so Hopper. The depth you know, naturally Trelaw. goes. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that's um, fair. But it's still a problem. Mm. It's still a problem. So yeah, I'm, Look, I'm not too concerned though. Mm. Nah, fair concerned. enough. Fair enough. Look, there are, there are some dudes. I think there's a guy called Roaston who's Roast, in there. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's another inside mid who they have, you know, possibly who can come in. I don't know if he's that good, to mm-hmm. be honest, but I'm just thinking like other dudes who... Might be ready to go and help him out. Callum Ward's still there, but mm-hmm. he's you know he's 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 getting a bit old. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't be too too concerned if I was GWS just yet. You know, but it's two losses in a row against two really good teams, which it won't feel good. And mate, you could tell by um, Kingsley. Did you see him on the on the Heated. sideline, mate? That is the scariest coach, just about ever. See, like I know I, there's people who can get angrier, and Mick Malthaus had that deathly scare, like deathly stare to him. But this dude's jacked as well. Is he like the like, new? He's like the new, and not body shape, but like the mm. fear that you'd get, like looking in Kevin Sheedy's eyes or like Lee Matthews. Yes, that's Kingsley's got the look, man. Yeah, but the, yeah, and it's not so much in the face because he doesn't have a scary old man face. But when he comes up with you with a Freaking yeah, this jacked bloke. He, he kind of looks like your uncle that just knows beat like Brazilian jiu jitsu somehow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, what? How's he? He must be doing psalms or something. I don't know what this guy's doing, bro, to get that big. You know, but it he's... makes sense. Like, why aren't more AFL coaches in that shape? Yeah, you got a, free gym facility. Free gym facility. Yeah. B, stressful job. You know, get rid mm. of some stress by exercising. Yeah, it's actually kind of poor that so many coaches don't look like that. No, you're right. You're right. You know, mate, calling out the AFL coaches, man. Like, you know, hey, man, Kingsley set the standard for you guys. Eh? Just saying, man. If I had a free gym facility, I like to think I'd make the most of it. <laughs> not that I'm a gym. I'm not a gym guy, as you can see, but <laughs> yeah. I don't have free gym facilities. So that's the thing. That's, that's thing my excuse. Free is free is different. And man. I've got a kid now, man. Like, come on. Yeah, Give me a break. Too, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough, man. Kingsley probably doesn't have any kids. Let's be fair. Kingsley, Kingsley's a single guy. He just goes to the gym straight after. Well, he's work, out in the town in Western Sydney, right? yeah, mate. That's it, man. That's it. And um, you got to be jacked over there, bro. Otherwise, you're gonna get into some trouble, bro. Been, so, you know, been, he knew what he was doing. That's prepared. why he's the right man for the job. <laughs> um, he's ready. He's yeah. ready. Um, all right, I'll leave we, it for you to talk about this first because you were at the game. So tell me about yes, it. Yes, yes. Um, all right. So for this game, my so I'm looking at the score now. We lost by 38 points. I don't feel as horrible after this game, after, like as compared to the previous losses. Yep. You know, the Adelaide loss, I felt deflated, right? I, I'm just like, I was bewildered, right? Mm. The, you know, all oh, the Hawthorne loss, same thing. You know what I mean? You just feel shit afterwards. This game, 
Maybe it's because I went with one of my best mates, Chris Michaels. Shout out to him, man. Shout out, Chris. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be listening to this one. Maybe it's because I was with him and we were just vibing and it just, maybe it just wasn't as bad. You know, we are talking shit, talking about my super coach team. He was talking about his tips and whatnot. Whatever, you know, we're having a good time, right? Um, but, you know, you can see the structure of this team moving forward and you can see players playing in their right positions and, you know, being effective. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'd, I'm not as... Yeah, that's that's my yep. that's my feeling of yep. this game. You know, um, you're well justified in that. And someone who watched from home, and even just like sometimes you look at the stats and it really reaffirms how you felt. And yep. this time they actually do, right? So mm. let me tell you what I'm seeing here. Yeah, I'll break it down quarter by quarter. Quarter mm. one, four goals to Saints, three to North. Yep. Second quarter, this is when they had the edge. Four mm. goals to one. Mm. Third quarter, four goals to three. Mm. Last quarter, three goals to three. So it was one quarter we tied. Two yeah. quarters, we lost by one goal. Yeah. And just one bad quarter. One bad and then quarter, it just, yeah. the score worm even is just sort of creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. Mm. And in the end, you lose by six goals or whatever it was. Yeah. So this is why we don't, and I agree with you, we don't feel as filthy with the team yeah, because no. you can tell they just tried their best. Yeah. And like, they just weren't the better team. Mm, exactly. If this was Fair round enough. one, I'd probably be pissed because we have more expectations. But as North fans, it makes sense. We've readjusted our expecta- yeah. expectations on the team, you know, and I think there was about three, at least three goals that, you know, you know, like Hardwick said shit goals, <laughs> you know, you know, he said that there was two against us at least. There was a Nick Larky moment, brain fade, where he could have pan passed it over the top yep. and given it to, I think it was PC mm. in the goal square and he, he shanked it, yep. right? Yep. There was that. And I feel like there was... He, there he might dropped the chest mark as well. He dropped the chest mark. I think, you know, if we're going to talk about, you know, the our grievances of this game, mm-hmm. I think Nick Larky, first half, yeah. is, that's the thing. That's the one for me. Like, he was poor. I don't think he took a mark in the first half. And if he did, I didn't notice it. Mm. But he dropped plenty. I'll tell you that. Yep. Um, in the second half, a bit better. Did he get, end up with two goals or three goals? He we had help. two. Two goals. Two goals. Are you doing disposals as well? He's playing more up the ground in the ruck a bit as well. So that explains yeah, it. Yeah, that does a bit. Um, but yeah, I don't like him in the ruck, man. I don't th- I don't think he... I don't it scares think... the shit out of me, to be honest with you. Because yeah. if he does an injury, we're mm. <laughs> even more screwed than I, we already are. Exactly, man. So, uh, yeah, that that I don't like. Um, yep. But I wanted, to, I wanted to mention to you this funny moment in the game, right? Where we're... At, I'm, I'm going to have a guess about where whereabouts it was, right? I reckon it was... It would have been either late in this, late in the third or early in the first, right? My mate Chris, he goes, mate, time to bring on Toby Pink, change the game, right? And I, I start laughing, right? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Toby Pink has the ball in his hands. I didn't even realize he was on the field, right? <laughs> he gets the ball in his hands, hand passes off, dishes it off and gets a goal assist, he bro. Did. <laughs> I lost him, bro. You know, uh, Toby Pink changed the game, baby, you know, in the forward line. Well, so that was interesting. Let's briefly talk about him being the <laughs> sub. It's probably the least sexy sub of all time, both in looks and attributes yeah, of a player. No offense, Toby Pink. None no, at all. No. I love Toby. Yeah. But what the hell? <laughs> we all, all North fans saw him as the sub. Like, dear God, like, why? What have we done to deserve this? I know, I know. But, man, our, our sub picks is Fisher the previous But you know week, what? Toby Pink this, this week. This one had the best impact of them all because. Yeah. I could see the thinking if we were somehow in the game, which we mm. have been against the Saints last year. Yeah. Then you throw maybe throw him back to solidify if mm. you've got the lead. Yeah. If you need, like we did, a few more goals or a bit more presence, you throw mm. him forward. So it's yeah, actually it. not the worst sub I've ever seen. Mm. Um, yeah. I want to have a quick chat about the Saints because otherwise I'll ramble about North too much and then yeah, I'll come back. I'll come back to North and yeah. round it up, right? Mm. And that might have set it up like I was going to be positive, okay. but I'm not. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, good. I like this. Now, uh, nothing too bad. Firstly, yeah. I just want to have a bit of a crack at our boy Webster. <laughs> All right. Now, yeah. fitting that he returned this game, right? Mm-hmm. And had a Obviously. Few, he had a few shanks as well. The man. first quarter shanks yeah. m- oh, made me just standing ovation in this living room. Right? It, was, it was amazing. <laughs> but I just oh, wanted to say, yeah, mm. I get when a player leaves your team and mm. then the other, like your new fans cheer mm. and your old fans boo. Yeah. Like that's normal, right? Mm-hmm. It's like stuff that guy for leaving. Oh, no, cheer him because we love him now. Mm. Get it. The whole you knocked out our captain in a preseason game, mm. North fans booing, we're going to retaliate by cheering is the most flog, sorry, it's the mm. most flog move from a fan base you could do. That's fair. That's not showing support yeah. to your player. That's like you're cheering assault. 
That that's a bit like, cool, man. What yeah. are we doing here, man? Yeah. Like, if you want to like North fans want to boo Mason Wood mm. and then you cheer Mason Wood, that's cool. Yeah, that's mm. fair game. Mm. Oh, this is just rubbish, man. Nah. I was fuming on it because obviously they're louder than the North fans. Yeah. I'm like, why am I hearing cheering you flogs? That's fair. Was that's Chris fair. cheering? Well, nah, I good. Nah, Chris wouldn't cheer. Chris wouldn't cheer. He's a good dude, man. So the overall Saint supporters are just deadbeats. Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. so hey, you know what? One chant that I did like from them is Mason Wood. That's fair game. That's mad. That's, that's fair. Mad. That's fair. I love yeah. Mason Wood. Mm. We man, I'll never forget the memory. Yes, we were at a Greek event. Event. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're at the front. You were the... a bit tipsy at the front. I was, I was just arriving. I was smashed. You were smashed watching yeah. the last quarter in the North lobby. versus Sydney, yeah. and I rocked up late. Yeah, and we finished watching the game on your phone, and that G up <laughs> of the Mason Wood goal. North fans know the goal. Yep. I don't need to tell you twice. Yep. Best moment ever. Anyway. Oh yeah, no, that that was that. That's that's a <laughs> core memory right there. Core memory. Like when I threw that big chunk of ice at my sister. That was so funny, bro. We were at the snow. Core memories, man. Anyway, core memories. Um, Those are no, two of the. I'll two say of some the many. nice things about the Saints now, right? <laughs> I'm a big fan of Wangadi Miller. I've said it a few times on the pod. Yep. Excellent player. Mm-hmm. Sinclair had his best game of the year. Yep. In the guts, mainly. In the guts. So yeah, he did very well. Um, Darcy Wilson. Mm. They were hyping him a bit too much on the commentary, but yeah. But he did. Let's he was great. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, and I will say this: for a rookie to be the best runner at the club, and mm. at the same time, mm. apparently they're not talking kilograms anymore. But apparently, the whispers are he's put on nine kilograms, <laughs> and uh, he looks it. All right, let's let's okay, let's. No, look we at need, uh, Asada's got to get onto this. Bro. Come on, this man. is what I don't get. How yeah. are you that aerobically strong mm. and putting on muscle? He That's might be crazy. a freaky person. Maybe, maybe that's he's just a yeah, freak. You know. Genetics. So well done. Like Saints have got a good one there. Mm. Jeez. Yeah. It's funny. Like I, I want not to not to call out you at all, right? But maybe it is a little bit of a call out. Yeah, right. You did not rate Darcy Wilson and Windsor. Yep. In the preseason for some reason. You didn't you didn't like them, but now they're battling it out for the rising star I this thought, week. What it they was, had excellent yeah. games. Yeah. What, what you're thinking? What it was was the talk of the top ten. Yep. I wasn't because North I was looking at North, right? Mm. And then North also had pick seventeen and whatever it was. Yeah. Now, if they came to those picks, I would have been fine with it. But yeah. the early shout, I wasn't on board with. Fair enough. For but, Windsor, yeah, he ended up going sixth. Yeah. That's quite high. And you know what? There are a lot of players that are just good runners and nothing else, right? True. So, true. like, think of it like a Sam Gibson for North. He was a pretty good player. Mm. But if he hadn't had the engine, we're not talking yeah. about him. He's not skillful. Yeah, nah, you know nah, what I mean? Like, nah. mm. I thought risky to draft so early on a runner. But fair he's enough, quite clearly enough. not just that. So, yeah. I'll definitely yeah. put my hands up on that one. Mm. Um, um, and Jackson Hayes, your boy, my Jackie boy, Hayes. Jackie Hayes got him early in draft. I'm very happy. Matza went early in draft, and that's mm. a stroke of genius, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, giving the Saints what they need, I think, one more aerial presence, mm-hmm. help out King, help out Marshall. Yeah. He's just sort of the perfect in between. Yeah, and you know so, what the things King got dominated by Aiden Core somehow, right? right? So they actually needed, you know, a guy to step up, you know, and be that physical presence. And he leads well, man. Mm. When you lead, you get rewarded. Yeah, you know, and that's um that's something that um Chris was saying very much. So I think he texted his dad. It's like, bro, someone's leading for once. You know. Yep. Um. Yeah. Um. And the next and last thing I'll say about the Saints mm. on a positive note, and this is equally how bad North is at defending. But mm-hmm. when they had the ball a little bit outside fifty, lowering the eyes and just hitting up a lead, like as mm-hmm. you just mentioned, the leads, it's just beautiful stuff. Yeah. Like it really is. This blazing yeah. away, hoping for a contested mark, mm. only works sometimes, but. When that ball gets released and then just you see the space the forward runs into and it just hits him, yeah. it's a thing of beauty. Mm, so, yeah. well done to the Saints. A mm. um, little bit on North now, just coming yep. back to that. Yep. It is fantastic to see our leading players, McKercher, yep. 30 touches. Wardlaw, Wardlaw the warrior. Monster. Monster. Oh, my God. The collision seeing that with, live. Oh. The collision with Wilson. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that's what heartwarming Lovely. stuff. Lovely. But, yeah. Um, you know, kicking goals as well and so on. Mm. She's all more in the midfield. Love it. Yeah, that's it. Someone not a lot of people are talking about. Mm -hmm. Jackson Archer. Okay. Locked up. Mitch Owens. You're right, actually. Locked him up. Where was he? Yeah, no, you're right. Mitch Owens was nowhere to be seen. And if you were to ask me who am I worried about the most, it's Mm. a guy like Mitch Owens that North can never contain. We can never contain Dugowie and Stringer and these explosive Mm. guys in the forward line. But I'll tell you what, Jackson Archer could contain him. Yeah, man. And he 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 looked like a child out there. But he was he was matching it physicality wise. And this is exciting. A lot of the game. Yeah. And him and Common have raw aggression in our defense, which we've been lacking. So I'm really excited to see them develop. Mm, there you go. Um, a bit of shimbona spirit, some might say. Bit of shimbona, no, shimbona spirit. <laughs> Tristan Jerry. 
Yeah. Surprise packet of the year. Yep. Shimbona Spirit. Mate, dominated this game. Man. Probably the only time North has successfully had a trainee player mm. overtake the experienced player and, and have a smooth good. transition. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, mm. So that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Last thing I want to say. Yeah. Have you seen the picture of Luke McDonald throwing up after the game? No, and like North no. has captioned it like, gave it our all. <laughs> Or maybe just unfit. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm two ways on this, bro. <laughs> on one hand, I love to yeah. see it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Especially because he's a leader and he's been criticized. And that yeah. would tell me like, yep, he gave it his all and he's throwing up now. Yeah. On the other hand, bro. Yeah. I think it is just the unfitness. <laughs> <laughs> like, how could you? <sighs> I don't know what to say, man. Like, mm. Now that's the barometer. If he's not throwing up every game, <laughs> all oh, eyes yeah. are on him, man. Yeah, so no, hundred percent. Well done. He I actually like had that. a decent game. Luke yeah, Ray. he had a decent game. Uh, that you yeah. know what, man? This like I love doing the podcast with Georgie, but like not having someone to bounce ideas off of for North games. You need the North. It, oh man, you need the support. The I, support. I needed this, man. Yeah. North Melbourne enjoys, man. That was fun. Um, that was fun. But yeah, yeah. funnily yeah. enough. <laughs> Sorry, man. My Mate. last thing. I was praising yeah. Jackson Archer. <laughs> he had four disposals. <laughs> but he locked down Owens though. He did his job. Yeah, no, nah, nah, he was fine, mate. He did, he should not lose his spot. No, no. He really he shouldn't, shouldn't lose his spot. All um, right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, come, uh, go on to another really good game, which I saw bits mm. and pieces off because we were coming back from the footy. But, man, uh, the Melbourne. Melbourne. They're exciting, man. They're exciting again. Mm. They beat a really good team in Geelong. That's, that's the type of win you need to show, you know, you know, to stamp your dominance on the league. Here yep. it is. And what better way to do it than with Clary Oliver? Mm. The sleeping giant is re-emerging. No coincidence. He's not fat anymore. No. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's actually, he's back in shape maybe. It's you know? not a coincidence that he has his best game mm. in their biggest win of the year. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's, um, you know, yeah. And this, yeah. And Petrarca, still not, still not up to the lofty standards. So, you know, there's still growth in this team. Yet they win, which is great for them. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Geelong had to lose at some point though. They did. They did. You know, yeah. And um, Bailey Fritch just goes, yep, I'll, I'll take that mm. W. Thank you very much. With that goal on the... Oh. That got got me excited, I tell yeah. you. That one and the Gorn goal as well. When Gorn just he did a Buddy Franklin and just ran around, yep. you know, and smacked it. Right. Match winning moment, like, and to win the game by eight points, you mm. are needing to pull out two incredible goals like that. Pull it's a credit to stops. Geelong. It's a credit yeah. to Geelong, but even bigger credit to Melbourne. Mm. Made me think though the fridge goal, especially. Mm-hmm. Is it just me, or in the last like year or two, has there been a lack of dribble goals? Mm. You know how for a while it was like stop dribbling. And like yeah. Dunstall and that, giving him yeah. shit. Yeah, maybe people he did, actually- He killed it. Yeah, people listened to him. You he know? actually killed it. But the dribble goal's fun. Like It's fun. And like, he, mm. I reckon that's the first and only time like mm. media pressure has actually stopped something. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, when someone who's kicked 1,200 goals starts saying, stop going to dribble. You Such know, is the he, fear of the roast on I, the bounce. I know, I know. Jeez, man. Um, you know, all of a sudden, I think we got to start roasting something. You know what I mean? And maybe they'll. Uh, but we do the whole shit on your team or shit on your player. And yeah, and make them perform. So. True, true. So we do have that. We do have that. Um, but yeah, well, we'll actually another player. We, we got to talk about Windsor a little bit. Yeah, Caleb. Yeah. yeah, there was two moments, right? I think that encapsulate the smart footballer that he is, and the what's the word? Um, the determined football that is. There was a mm-hmm. tackle on Jack Henry when Jack Henry was, you know, running up, you know, past the 50, rebounding, tackled him, you know. Mm. And it led to, you know, I think, I can't remember who kicked it into the 50, but it got chopped off. But I love that tackle, right? And then there was a tackle in the forward 50 on, um, who was it? Uh, on Guthrie, I mm. believe it was. Ran him down, shot on goal, clutch, you know, snap into the, you know, yeah. into the goal. What a What a man, you know. Shout out to him, man. They, I think they did well with their pick six. They did what they needed to do with that. You know, a like, win now player. Got what they wanted. Mm-hmm. Interesting about the tackle pressure. For me, these players like Wilson, like Windsor, mm-hmm. if you've got an engine and speed, yep. you have to do this. You can't just yes, be outside, yeah. get all the cheap possessions. Be Jaden Stevenson, basically. You can't be Jaden Stevenson. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. Who, by mm-hmm. the way... Well, oh, yeah, he's got to go. Yeah, no. He's got to go. Um, um, yeah, now nah, he's gone. <laughs> Um, yeah, but no, I think both these teams will hope to be in the top four. To be honest with you, mm, yeah. they're in great form. Yeah, uh, it doesn't it doesn't really um, say anything bad on Geelong that they lost this one. It was probably mate, probably almost complimentary that they could get that close to a team that was playing that good. Well, that's exactly what I was saying. Like to only mm. lose by eight points and two epic goals in the last quarter mm. happen. Like, come on, yeah. that's the close games. You need magical moments to win it, and Melbourne got it. So, mm-hmm. 
Fair play. Mm. Um, yeah. Any much more to talk about on that one? Not really. Yeah. Other than I just really appreciate Geelong's aerial dominance in games. Like, yeah. Especially nah, the defense, true. like behind the ball. My God. Like mm. the conning. Mm. Even guys like Colin Jasney, just impenetrable. Like, how? Yeah. And what's his name? Was it Jack Stuart. Henry? Zach Guthrie. Zach Guthrie's playing out of his mind. Yeah, I didn't realize that he was the better Guthrie, bro. <laughs> like, he's now. He's yeah. right now. He's definitely the it's better crazy. Guthrie. You know, obviously Cam's just getting back into the swing of it. He had a lot of Muppet moments, man. Mm. He had a lot of moments where I'm like, bro, this free kick against this yeah. and that. The tackle from Windsor, you know, he, he probably needs to catch up on the speed a little bit of the game. Yeah, but, he'll know, be fine. He'll be okay. know, especially in the guts. Last week he was all right in the mm. half back line, but in the guts, I mean, you got to be a bit yeah. more switched on. And this is without um, Hawkins. He hasn't kicked a goal in like. Four or five weeks, I think. Jeez. Funnily enough. Yeah, that's crazy. So that's crazy. he's out of form and we know mm. he'll come back. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's... And they're still just dominant in the air. Like, mm. it's crazy. Yeah. Actually, interesting. Mentioning key forwards, Jeremy Cameron was playing everywhere this game. He was playing. I saw him at half back at points. He's going playing crazy. up on the wing. Yeah. Crazy. Man. Ro- like Georgie said, robot. Mr. Mm. Robot. Yeah. Especially uh, when he's on. He does go through some patches of the year uh, where he's less noticeable. But when he's on, my goodness, he mm. takes over games. 100%. Um, but uh, great game of footy, that one. Mm-hmm. The next one, I didn't watch as much of it, but I was watching the scores. I was keeping yeah. an eye on it. Mm. Um, mm. Essendon, sneak over the line. West Coast is they actually do. right now. Yeah, no, they are, man. I think, like, and I've been saying this the last couple of weeks, they're firmly in the middle pack. They're firmly, maybe the lower end of the middle pack, but they're there. They're actually tippable now. What's that? You can tip them now. You can, yeah. Crazy enough, you can tip you them. You can tip them. Yeah. I think one thing, the only concern with them right now, right, moving forward, at the end of the game, Yo did get a groin injury. I don't know the extent of that injury, but that is a huge out. Yeah. That is big, you know. They're going to need a lot of stepping up from Sheed, who's just, you know, getting himself back into the fitness, um, Harley Reid in the guts. They're going to have, they're going to be asking a lot of those guys, but there's still enough weapons around. Like McGovern's still playing well. You know, Jack Darling is he's the man right now, man. And yep. even more, the, the real man, let's be fair. The real Jack the Snake. The real Jack the Snake Waterman, baby. He, he can't stop playing well, man. man. You know, I think officially he's, you know, premier key forward right now. Like, well, he's top man. five in the Coleman. Well, there you go. Genuinely, you he's go. up there. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm curious to see now, you know, um, wh- where is he at marks-wise, right? Because he gets a lot of contested marks, like... So we'll view profile. So marks wise, he's elite seven point four. I don't know how to check. Um, you know, we'll check right now. Contested marks. Let's mm. have a look. Where where is that? Where is that man? Um, yeah, contested marks two point three. So I'm not not quite elite, but still, that's a lot. You yep. know. Yeah. There we go, man. Jake the Snake, man. He's great. He's he's Charlie. He's Charlie Kerno two point oh. Some might say body wise. Yeah, probably not as fast. Yeah, but like slightly undersized. But like, like what's it called? Um, width-wise, he's not undersized. And the crazy thing is, right? Oscar Allen's not in the team. Yes, he's true. A monster in his own right. Yeah, and he not is. even hit his potential. So, West Coast currently have solid two-prong defense: McGovern mm-hmm. and Barras. Mm-hmm. It's better than most teams. Yes. And then, assuming fitness, Allen and Waterman. Mm. And Darling's on the Darling's, decline-ish. Yeah, but he's still... He's playing well now. Yeah, but he's still, you know, making a presence, yep. you know, so that's fine. So, say, yeah. let's say long-term, though, too. Mm. Right? Yeah. So, Allen, Waterman, midfield, Reed, mm. Jinby. Like, they've got a couple in each each line that is really good. Yep. Um, yeah. You gotta, you'd gotta. you have confidence going to the future. And they're brutes much. as well. Like They are. They are. They're not, they're not you know, holding back correct. much at all. Yeah. You know, these so, I guys. think they'll be... They're well set now. I think mm. the concerns about them not having enough talent mm. are not as extreme as we thought. No, Injuries I, killed them and, and all that last yeah. year. But And all this, oh man, if North Melbourne are getting compensation, what about West Coast? No. That can be firmly put to bed. Because, look, it should have never have been there considering they won a premiership in 2018. Yeah, no. That should never have been there in the first place. But, you, you know, can't, now, You can't win a flag and then get injuries and decline and cry. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seriously, man. Yeah. Um, um, we yeah. should say a few nice things about Essendon now. Yeah. Um, you can, my, my full stop point on this, mm-hmm. you can't let Parrish, Martin and Merritt dominate you and expect to win. Yeah. Those true. guys can't control the game. True. 36 disposals for Parrish. Shout out Zuds. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Zuds, man. Nick Martin, 32. Mm-hmm. Merritt, 29 and three goals. 
Fucking Can't that, allow that. Yeah, no, nah, that they went crazy, man. They really did. Merritt, I think, might be the most consistent mid this year, to be honest with you. Like week in, week out, mm. he's the dude really performing. Um, up yep. there with I reckon he's yeah, up there with the butters, up there with the bonds, up there with mm. Yeah. I and three he, goals in a one goal win is mm. crazy. Yeah. From a mid. Clutch. Clutch, man. That's huge. Um, I think, yeah, low key, their midfield depth is actually I don't rate these guys overly high, but the thing is there's a few of them that can just mm. pull a shift. Like yep. Perkins goes in there and gets a few, you know, um center bounces. Um they have Setterfield to come back in who, you know, he's 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 all right. You know what I mean? He's Durham big, as well. D- yeah, Durham. I think Durham's probably been the big one. Just the physical presence in there helps out Parish and Merritt a lot. Yep. Um so yeah, I think they're they're building building up this team quite nicely, to be honest mm. with you. You know. And they've got um what's his name coming back? Halfback. Halfback. Sorry, halfback. Ah, oh, yes, yes. Uh, Ridley. Ridley. Ridley's Ridley. coming back yeah. at some point. Mm. My only question with Essendon is their forward line being consistent. Guys like Stringer, Gresham, mm. Jones I like a lot. I think yeah. he's their best forward. Oh, wow. To be honest with you, long term. Long, uh, long term, yeah. Long yeah. term for sure. But like I think over La- over Peter Wright and Langford, I think it's a bit... Yeah, no, fair enough. Long term. But can... Yeah. Langford's probably the most consistent. Yeah. Peter Wright, mm. when he's fit, he's consistent. Mm. Oh, yeah. When he gets a contested mark yeah. in the 50, it's just about a guaranteed goal. Yeah. You know no, he's, I mean? he's excellent, right? Mm. So, can guys like Stringer, Davey, Gresham, can mm. these guys actually play consistently? Because mm. when they're on, they win games well and they can hit a good score. Yeah. When they're not having an influence, they get stuck in games like this. Yeah, true. true. So, mm. you know. I don't know. And even in this game, like you're talking about the forward line, they've relied on Zach Merritt three goals. That's what I'm saying. To man. get him over the line. So, that's a fair fair concern to have to raise. Yeah. Um, but I think, do we finally start just showing Essendon some respect? You know, and irrelevant of who their coach is? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, only because... That's the answer I wanted to hear. Only because even Essendon fans will admit, mm. good start. Mm. They've had good starts, good half, good first half to the year, mm-hmm. most years. It's mm. the second half of the year where the eyes are on them and they consistently don't do enough. Yeah, so yeah, that's fair. I'm, I'm happy to say they're playing well. They're in mm. the eight for a reason. I enjoy watching them play most yeah. of the time. But I can't shake the stink uh, yet. You know, you know I'm gonna, I'm, I've got a little comparison here, right? Sure. So... Basically, what you're telling me about Essendon, right, is that you're appreciating the good stuff that's happening right now. And you you think, oh, yeah, this is actually a pretty decent team. However, until you win something, I'm a hater. <laughs> Doesn't that sound familiar, Dino? You know what? No, it's fair, though. Now you understand. Yeah. You understand the perspective. So just to you know catch you guys up to speed, I am an Arsenal hater until they win something, right? So for now, uh, shout out, you know, shout out. You guys have made a beautiful team. You know, it's great. But I've heard comments about this is this team's been built up the way Barcelona's been built up and stuff like that. But Barcelona, you know, back in the day with Xavi and Iniesta and Messi and uh, and who else? Suarez. Man, that team was ridiculous. With like, there's no comparison just yet. Until you win something, that's it. We, if Arsenal win it this year, I'll I'll show respect. And like how you will show respect to Essendon after they win a final this year. If Look, they would win a final. The That's, analogy's there. Yes. I'm insulted that you're comparing Arsenal to Essendon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I understand. But yeah, when understand. Essendon yeah. shows it in the second half of the year, mm-hmm. then I'll respect it. Yeah, but you, you get you get it. You get Fair it. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the comparison is wild. Yes, I know, I know. It is. It's disgusting. I know. But I, I get the premise. But they're both teams that wear red. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I get the premise. Yeah. Um, um I would say Merritt is comparable to um to Bukayo Saka with the left foot. You know what I mean? Left foot kick, you know? Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? There we fair. go. There, both you know? stronger than they look. Yeah, but exactly. Both stronger than they look, you know? Got a bit of, bit of dog in them, that's you know? Fair, I mean, fair. there you go. See, no other podcast will give you the comparison of Zach Merritt <laughs> and Bukayo Saka. Um, it's probably never been done. No, no. <laughs> I don't know how I pulled that out. Not going to lie. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's like the, uh, what's it called? The, Har- the Not Harry Potter. The Spider-Man. <laughs> the Spider-Man thing, you know? Um, yeah. Fair there enough. Fair enough. Well, look. I, for one, mm. am not a chirper when it comes to Arsenal, just briefly. Yeah, no. I, you're, I, you're not that bad. You're not that bad. I'm not that bad. No, nah, nah, yeah, no. Nah. There are the chirpers out there. Um, enough, but yeah, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll move on before I get Dino any angrier. I know. You're uh, making me... You're, you're testing me today. <laughs> Matt, so you're testing Look, me. the thing is, I don't know when the next time I'm going to have you on the pod is, bro. I have to roll you up, Getting man. in your shots while you can. That's it. I've got to keep it entertaining, man. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll shuffle along to... Um, it's funny because this feels weird right now. I'm, sh- I'm so used to now... 
taking the responsibility of oh, shuffling it. on I the games because Dino is the traditional host of the show. No, you're doing great. But now, but now, like uh, the transitions are just they're, they're coming to no, me, it's man. Natural, it's natural. So you know, again, shuffling along, <laughs> shuffling along <laughs> onto Richmond versus uh, Freo. Um, I feel bad for Richmond, bro. I feel bad, you know. No, I, I, I don't. You don't. <laughs> I you really don't. don't. You know what? Maybe, maybe this is a blessing. Maybe this is a blessing. All these injuries, you know, they get another top four, five pick. They do have their pick this year. I'm pretty sure. Mm, Surely, yes. Surely they're not yes. still owing GWS. No, no, they you don't. know, they don't. Not, they're still not, you know, in debt to the bank of GWS. Um, yeah, but look, man, Frio, you know, their midfield depth with Fife as of the sub, which was ridiculous, right? Mm. Um, looked was great, man. Like Sarong steps up, Hayden Young, um, Matty Johnson. Matty Johnson, we forget about that dude, man. He had a great game. You know, this was his opportunity to show out against, you know, an undermanned Richmond midfield. Um, and, you know, Lukey Ryan hmm. has, you know, he had he had pretty much the probably the most dominant halfback game or fullback, halfback game, whatever position, to this point of the season from a defender. But then Zorko kind of, you know, <laughs> Zorko kind of put his hat in the Ryan's ring. Ryan's game, I think. Was a bit more impressive for yeah, me. A bit more clinical, yeah. I think. You know, he, he uses it so well yeah. as well. You know, Zorko was just sort of roaming around, getting a few cheap like soccer kicks and whatnot. Yeah, it's fair. That's fair. Great game, um, though. Great game. Mm. But um, look, I'll tell you why I don't feel sorry for Richmond. Yep. Firstly, any team that's had elite success, like more than one premiership mm -hmm. in the last what ten years, that's it. Like anything you suffer in the coming years. Just don't stress. You're fine. That's fair. Don't that's stress. Fair. Just enjoy. Watch the DVDs. Like honestly, watch the DVDs. That's what I would do. That's what no, I would do. No, you're true. You go back to happy times. Happy if times. If I could watch North, mm. say those years we made the prelims, mm. they actually ended in a granny. Guess yeah. what I'd be watching right now? Yeah. You know we, what I mean? wouldn't, we wouldn't have this anxiety of our team being shit. Correct. You know what I mean? That, and they shouldn't. They, they'd just be calm. They'd be like, oh, no, it's not our turn this time. Correct. Not our turn. So... That's why I don't feel sorry for them, firstly. Mm. You've had your elite success. Yeah. Great memories, right? Mm. Secondly, like you said, it's injuries. So yeah, you're right. You're right. If you're going to get bullied a bit when you're so undermanned, mm. don't stress. Like, yeah, it's no, fine, man. If, if North's reason for being so bad was all that good players are down, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be stressing either. <laughs> but yeah. our problems are not so deep. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Sorry, maybe, I'm not that shallow. They're deeper. Mm. So yeah. maybe I'll, I'll, re, I'll redirect my feelings, sorry for, to Adam Uzo, perhaps. You know yeah, I mean? that's fair. That sort of sucks for the coach. They have, you know, some key positions out and he can't really show his stuff. But you know what? It, it probably allows him to embed the mm. um, the game plan into those guys for a bit longer and then they'll show their stuff. And you, know you can I mean? discover a few gems as well. Like, um, mm. don't want to butcher his name. LaFau? LaFau? LaFau, yeah. LaFau? Yeah, he's he's a gun. Is he um, getting a game so soon and so many games if Lynch is fit? Don't no, know. No. Maybe not. And Bolter? Don't yeah, think so. Yeah. So it was his name Thompson Dow getting like ample opportunity in the exactly. midfield. Um, Sonsi getting a bit exactly. of midfield opportunity. So yeah. it's not all bad. Mm. Um, and you know, Frio just squeezes the life out of you if you're not a good team. Yeah, they true, just they do, look man. at their like yeah. Ryan thirty nine touches, Sarong thirty eight, Brayshaw mm. thirty one, Young thirty. They just hog the ball. Yeah, I, <laughs> so, I want to like have a little look. How, how much do they restrict teams? So forty nine Richmond, seventy one Bulldogs. 105 West Coast, but that was just a freak game. That was a weird game. 66, yeah. so they lost the port, but it was 66 points to the port. 73 to Carlton, 34 to Adelaide, 76 to North, which actually looks decent now from us when I look at it. 70 Brisbane. They, That's what I mean, right? they've so, only copped 100 points once correct. this year. So Richmond was never going to kick a winning score mm. so depleted in their forward line especially. So they'll be fine. Um if I were them, they're currently second last, mm. clear by a win each to Hawthorne and West Coast who have won two games. Yeah. I'd just be doing what I do. Shout out footy stuff on YouTube. Puts all highlight vids of the young prospects. <laughs> yes, yes. He's, a, he's amazing. That man. guy slash girl, mm. don't know who, who or, mm. he or she is. Mm. Elite content. Yes. The only person posting what you want in draft uh, research, I guess you could say. Yeah, exactly. And if there, if anyone has any, you know, any other sources, let us know let because us know. footy stuff is carrying the footy load. stuff's the guy. Mm -hmm. um, so just start watching, like subscribe. Yeah, that's what I've done. Yeah, watch um, some Josh Smiley vids. Watch some Finn Sydney. O'Sullivan vids. Yeah, he might be someone who falls the two or three because North are getting Smiley anyway. Correct. So um, just just chill out and watch those. Enjoy and knowing that mm. you do have good players still, experienced players. Mm -hmm. And next year you could be watching. I don't know, if you know Sullivan run alongside Taranto and Hopper, that'd be great. Exactly, exactly. So just sure. enjoy, man. Yeah. I think in a, in a midfield heavy draft, they've landed 
perfect. Perfect. The Thomas yeah. Dow builds up a bit more. You've got Dusty yeah. in and out, Bolton in and out. Like, yeah. Calm down. Yeah, no, nah, calm it down, man. Calm it down. Calm, calm it down. down. You're fine. Um, yeah, but anyway, we'll, uh, I think, bring it on to the last game. I think it's There's probably... two more games, actually. There's two more? What? We've got Doggies. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> let's talk Doggies, man. <laughs> yeah. Let's... And this is, I'm going to channel yeah. my inner, inner George right now. Yeah. Bevo's got to go, man. Bevo's, Bevo's, look, I think, he's, I think it's his time. Bevo's got to go. He's got to go. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, you know, uh, Georgie, I agree. Georgie, I agree. Look, um, let's talk Hawthorne first, actually. Yeah. Right? Res- respect for these guys, man. Great win. You got mm. youngster coming in, Cal Shadio, just mm. popping up. Yeah. Sicily goes forward, has an impact. Mm. After like dislocating his shoulder or whatever he did. Sicily's playing with one arm. <laughs> yeah, and he's out-muscling people in the forward line, taking contested marks. Nick Watson can mad. miss a goal line goal. Oh, man. And mug, it doesn't muggle, matter. Muggle wizard. Bro. I'm muggle, so glad for Watson. him that mm. they didn't lose that game. Bro. I know. I know, man. He would have copped so much. And like um, they weathered the storm in the last quarter. They built the lead. Doggy mm. stormed back real quick. And then they yeah. just got it again. So, well done mm. to Hawthorne. Their midfield somehow mm. bullied the dogs midfield, which I did not see coming. Yeah. I think um, Dylan Moore had a huge impact. When he enters... You're trying to trigger me again, mate. What? Sorry, I lost my draft matchup because Dylan Moore died. Oh, it. yeah. Sorry, man. Sorry, bro. <laughs> shout out Dudes uh, again. Yeah, shout out. <laughs> you mean Dudes? Oh, sorry, Perry. It was Perry. Perry. Shout sorry. out Perry, shout, man. Shout out Perry. Shout out Dutchie. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, nah, Dil- Dylan Moore was huge, man. Like, they they ended up... Like, he was having a big impact around the ground for most of the game. But then in the last quarter, they're like, all right, we need... Our best player today has to go into the guts. You know, they subbed out McKenzie because he wasn't really providing much. And they're like, all right, here you go, mate. That's your role now. Mm. Um, and he did the business, man. He was really good, really impactful. Yep. Um, so well done to Hawthorne, honestly. Like mm. these sort of games don't surprise me though because last mm. year and maybe the year before as well, they'd have some random good wins like this. They do. They're one of the most wildly inconsistent teams Correct. in the league, which I guess is kind of if you're a bad team, it's kind of good because at least you, you give your supporters some little joys here and there. Exactly. Shout out JL. Yeah. Um, and this is yeah. what I was saying the other week when I sent in my recording after the North game. Like, you're not as bad as North. No, they were trying no, to pretend no. like this is a battle of the equals. You were never as bad as North and you're not as bad no. as North. And it's just a shame that you had one of those good games against us because then you know, I know. there's exactly. our opportunity to win gone. Exactly. So, mm. well done mm. to the Hawks though. Mm. The Dogs though. It's not just that they lost, man. Like... Mm. The amount of skill errors is crazy. Yeah, it's like you wouldn't expect that because they have they do have a lot of dudes with with skill, but <laughs> they do. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I think it, it's just it's odd the way they the way Bevo the Bevo salad as it's been coined the way he rotates players through and doesn't put the best players in for long enough. I don't understand it. Like McRae ended up being I think your best midfielder at points in the game, and especially in the last quarter you did you went you didn't play him out the quarter you didn't let him play it out when he was the dude actually providing some class going into the 50 and using it well and being a calm presence at all time mm. i don't understand that yet bailey dale popping up into center bounces yeah like leave him at half back he's doing fine there and you know what it is as well one thing i think people don't talk about enough with the dogs like yeah i agree with you 100 mm. percent. some of the decisions about where players play for how long is mm. just crazy mm. But let's just have a walkthrough. I want to go through their list with you yeah, for a moment. Yeah. Okay. So I want you to tell me how many of their players are actually A graders. Because I think so, we all just have the drunk goggles on with the dogs and we have had for years. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. That's, I, I like that. Like, like the drunk goggles. I so like let's that. go through it one by one. Okay. I want you to give them a grade in your opinion, like a genuine A grade. Yeah. And then maybe B. Maybe, and give me, you know, what, I'll give you what they are. And their potential grade. Correct. All right, fine. Yeah, I think that's the best way to do so it. So tell me like A, B, C, whatever, and yeah. like, don't know. Yeah, that's fine if yeah, you don't yeah. know, or like unproven. Yeah. So Ed Richards. Ed Richards. I think right now he's about a C or B, and I think that's where his potential is. I don't think there's much growth out of him, yeah. especially as a midfielder. If as I'm, a midfielder, I don't think there's much growth. If there. I'm thinking like premiership standard, I think he's a C player that can play mm. a B game. Yeah, that's fair. That's my yeah. opinion. Jones. Mm. Liam Jones. Liam Jones. I think... He's probably A, to be honest with you. Like, I think as as a key defender, I think he's fine. I, I think, think he's, a he's I think he's a B. Like I consider yeah. the A's like yeah, Andrews is and Collins and whatnot. Uh, fair enough. Fair he's enough. not that good. B plus. B plus. Yeah. All right. Mm. Dale. Dale, at the moment he's an A. 100%. I think he's an A. He's an A. I yeah. think he's an A yeah. in the yeah. halfback no, no, role. No doubt about it. But he's treated like a D player for the start of at the yeah. start of the season. Johannesson. Johannesson. C or B. C or B. C or B. No. Again, I think better. he's a C can play B standards. Yeah. He had he had his moment in the finals. 
Did he win a Norm Smith? How long ago was that? I know that that was you know that was when I was a child. So I'll actually say he's a C at the moment. To be yeah, honest, no, that's right? fair. That's fair. Yeah. Buku Kamas. Buku Kamas. C or D? C, yeah, 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 not, right? not much better. If we're being that. real, for being harsh. Yeah, yeah. Potential B. That's about. That's O'Donnell about potential, but he's a C or D as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. probably a D. Mm-hmm. Bailey Bailey Williams. Williams. D, Arnold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that? Bailey Williams? Bailey Williams. C. C. Not much more. Right? He has his good moments, but he's not that great. Trelaw. Trelaw. He's, I think he's an A. He's, uh, a, he's a lower end A for me. Lower end A. Yeah, yep. but you got to give him an A. Okay. He's, still, he's still an elite accumulator. Yep. Yep. You know, of course, he's, his disposal is a bit suspect sometimes, but. Yep. Yeah. Harms. Harms. DC. DC. Max. DC Max. Yeah. Vandermeer. Vandermeer. DC. Yep. Norton. Norton. Pretend A great. He's a B. Pretend A. He's a B. No, you're right. He's you're a B. Right. Yeah. Okay. Gallic. But media will paint him like an A+, plus, but he's not. No, he's not. Okay. No. He's potential A+. Plus Correct. Because of just the physicalness but of it. But he's not been it for a couple of years now. No, no. Gallagher. 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 Man, Gallagher. DC. DC. Yeah. Sam Darcy. Massive potential. But yeah. right now, he's, he's a C. He's probably A++ plus 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 potential. Yeah. But at the moment, yeah, he's like a C. He's a C. B, maybe. Yeah. He can play a B game, but he's probably a C. Mm. Hugo Hagen. A, a plus potential, but right now he's like a B as well. Uh, yeah, uh, he, he, he's not yeah, cream of the crop forwards. In the, yeah, in probably the not. Probably not. not. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Bramble, C D. Bramble, yeah, meh. Tim English, A plus. Yeah. Bont, A plus. Liba, A plus. Right? Yeah. When you look at it that there's way. A, there's a bit more. There's a bit more, sorry. Yeah. Duray, C D. Duray, yeah. McRae. Right now. Probably right now a B. He's a B. But he should be A or A plus. But to be a, honest, he should be A or A plus. But he's a B right now, right? And yeah. then Garcia and Clark, unproven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, what did we learn? It's Bont, it's Libba, it's mm-hmm. Trelaw, it's English. The there rest of them, and then there's a few Bs, and the rest are Cs and Ds. Are we really, mm-hmm. after looking at that, surprised the, that they frustrate us and they're not consistent? They're not a final mm-hmm. team. Maybe it's not Bevo's fault. It's a little bit his fault, <laughs> but I think I think yeah. actually the whole mm-hmm. like. Bevo is the reason. Mm. And even, oh, I put my hand up as well. Yeah. I think the list just isn't that good. There you go. They've got that's, top end and then nothing. That's fair. That's fair. Look, I think that's that's a brave take, I think, that we, you, supporting Bevo is brave. You know? Look, I'm just saying. Stand with Bevo. I'm just saying you put like, <laughs> put like um, McCray, Craig McRae or mm. whoever else you think is the best coach here. Mm. I don't think it changes as much as people think, as much as I even thought a few weeks ago. That's. Yeah, that's that's interesting. That is interesting. Look, I think you're right. We're, we're probably enamored by the potential of these of these guys because they've had the, the high end talent and the amount of like academy selections. You know, the father son in um in Darcy, and what's it? There's got they've got a few more mm. just tall dudes just waiting in the wings to get an opportunity, and they're not there. So yeah, that's 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 I like that take, man. Mm. I like that take. Um, we chat. Is there much to talk about for Hawthorne? There, there, there really is, man. No, there we really kind of just shouted out a few players, I think, already. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm scrolling. I'm scrubbing a little scroll through them. It's the, who, who who did I like, man? Like, um, Weddle. His his goal was mad. I love Weddle. Man. Yeah. Um, I like Weddle. Didn't have the best game, but we're gonna talk about Will Day. Um, I like him. That's all. That's all. He's, he's Will Day's my guy. Um, he's probably the player where you watch him. You're like, fuck, oh, this guy's so good. And then right. you look at the stats. You're like, like yeah, 15 touches. Okay. Yeah. No, I was like, okay. Yeah, so yeah. But he has when he gets the ball and he's you know he's in and under and then he uses it cleanly. Wow, it's mad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's a look. This is a nice building team. They got on a few nice pieces, you know. I will say the funniest thing, <laughs> and you know, my brother is a Hawthorne supporter, right? Yeah. So he what hates, did he say about yeah. Nick Watson this <laughs> week? <bro? laughs> so he hates oh. the Watson pick, and I've said yeah. it to you already. Yeah, I, I agree, he's been pretty woeful, mm. but you know, he's a small forward, light body, he might take a little while. But man, that miss in the last quarter game on the line. Is inexcusable. Mm. Like George said well in the chat while the game was on, the elite small forwards of the league, your Camerons and whatnot. They're not missing that. You, even in, with their eyes closed, can't miss that. It's mm. impossible to miss it. Yeah, and 100%. 100% um, at any point in their career. You know, and we, unless unless someone you know gives us proof that they've had some bad misses over the years, man, shouldn't oh, happen. Look, if you're that committed to the pod, <laughs> prove mm. us wrong. But Yeah, prove us wrong. Prove us wrong, guys. Jeez, like we joked a few weeks ago, when does the wizard tag leave? Man. It has now, man. He's the muggle. Jeez. He's muggle. What's muggle, which one's muggle? I think muggle is muggle is. Oh, is he a muggler? mud blood? Is half, half, half wizard? Yeah, something like that. And muggle. I is, think he's mud blood. I think he's, look honestly right now he's a muggle and he's got his work. work well, let's his level out. him down though. So he's gone from wizard to mud blood. Let's give him a chance in the mud blood. All right, area. Mud, but I feel like we already did. He was he was already there. It was, like was, was a bit early. It was a bit. We gave him that. 
call like yeah. in round three. You just love draft players, man. You're like I, Kel- do, I do, I you do. Are, you are Kel Toomey 2.0. Speaking of Kel Toomey, right, I did see Riley Beveridge at the North game. Hey. Yeah, I did see him. I didn't have a ch- I, He was too far away. Like, it would have been weird for me to jump over, you know, four rows just to go, hey, Riley Beveridge, I like your shit. I couldn't do it. But, like, yeah, it was nice to see him pop up yeah. at, a, at a random ass game like that. I will say, I know it's probably his job as well, but he doesn't mm. need to be so optimistic. Riley Beveridge, mm. mate, respect to the actual quality of the content he bothers to write about yes. North. I don't know his other stuff, yeah, but I read his North stuff. Mm. And he always paints optimism and calm, mm-hmm. and he actually talks to people in the club and learns about what we're trying to do. There you go. So well, and great to hear he was at the game. Yeah. So we well go. done to him. Mm. Um, yeah, mm. appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. Last game, Brisbane Gold Coast. Yeah, the old firm. The old firm. The old firm. I'll tell you, what, you wouldn't have known it watching the Suns play. They yeah. couldn't give a shit. <laughs> no. No. Um, I was thinking more when I was saying old firm. I wasn't really thinking like. The like rivalry. rivalry. Oh. I wasn't thinking that. I was just thinking the old firm, as in like you know Zorko <laughs> and Neil. Oh. But I like, but I like that. Uh, that that um, I like that interpretation. The right? old firm. The old firm. You this is not me. the old firm. The Q clash is not the old firm, bro. <laughs> that is not right. I um, thought you were trying I, to hype up the Queensland derby. No, right? no, not at all. Not at all. I just wanted to talk about Zorko and Neil, <laughs> um, and Dunkley, right? <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go yeah, no, nah, that they were everywhere, bro. That was their game. They 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 must have taken this whole. You know the club shit so personally, and that, as they should, and they went nuts, bro. They yeah. went nuts, particularly Zorko, man. He was just everywhere. George um, said in the chat, "We yeah. need to talk about Zorko. Is mm. he on steroids?" And he said, "I'll elaborate on the next pod." Now he's not on the next pod, which is this pod. Yes, but so the next pod to, after that, we're gonna have to leave that for next week. Yeah, I know. We, we will discuss. You know, on the next episode of AFL Enjoyers, is Zorko on roids? Um, look, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but. One thing I want to say, I want to ask you: How old is Josh Dunkley? Tell me, what's your what? What do you think? Ooh, is he twenty nine? Twenty nine. Bro's twenty seven. Okay. So I feel like he's been an elite midfielder for like fifteen years or something, bro. <laughs> I mean, that's an exaggeration, you know. Little but I sw- I swear this dude is like prime of his powers, peak of his powers. And he's just, he's so consistent, man. Mm. He's so consistent. He's like the, he's just about the ideal midfielder, to be honest with you. Height, good in the contest, mm. takes contested marks around the ground. Like, underrated and ridiculous that he's not an all Australian. Ridiculous. To and me. you know what's ridiculous as well? What your yeah. dad told me the other day, which was, how did this guy not get father son by Sydney? Yes, yes. Probably the only player. That's actually any good to not get claimed. And he was like pick 20 something? Yeah, he was five? pick 25, right? And the interesting thing Crazy. is we had a look at the two dudes that Sydney picked later, right? One of them. So, look, it actually kind of worked in the end, right? Because they wanted better kicking and they thought Dunkley's kicking was suspect, which is dumb in the end, right? But they got a guy called Tyrone Leonardus, right? <laughs> and despite the cool name Tyrone... And Leonardus, both cool names and a nice little combination. I don't think Duke played a game, right? I don't remember him playing a game. I could, if I saw him on the street, he might he might be someone that I've seen many times on the street. I, I wouldn't know him, right? <laughs> a complete unknown. Tyrone Leonardus, shout out to him, right? But the next one, right, in the fifties, a pick in the fifties, JD. Yep, it was JD, man. So if they wanted better kicking. They got it in Dawson. They got it. Yep, they got he, it. he did leave. But when you look at it that way, it's just like basically you picked Dawson or Dunkley. Mm. Not too bad. Yep. Not too bad, man. Break even, I would say. Mm. Maybe not, but I, we'll say break even. We'll say break even. It is a shame that you didn't pick a father son though. It's just there on the he platter. Would, yeah, because he would have stayed. He would, he would never have left. And you can buy back into the draft in the 50s if you really wanted Dawson. Yeah. I don't know if the rules were as, you know. Yeah, true. true. Um, what's the word? Buying back Flexible in. Flexible buying yeah. back in. I don't know if that was yeah, a thing. Yeah. I don't know if you could trade future first. So that, no, you couldn't. Oh, you couldn't. Yeah, Fair play. I'm not sure. But yeah, anyway, there you go. But no, um, Brisbane did what they needed to do. I don't mm-hmm. think they were great. And this yeah. is what I want to talk about. Gold Coast. Preseason, I think George always is optimistic about Gold Coast. Yeah, he, he thinks this, he this is the year. Yeah, he loves them. You're probably next on the pod positive about Gold Coast. Mm. I've I'd always been so. the third positive. Not negative, mm. but I'll hey, tell you some what. Call him, some say it's easy. He hates <laughs> on them until they do something good. No, um, but here's the thing with them, right? It's not even for me about 
like looking at the bias of the past. For me, it's more just like you're playing in a derby. As yeah. much as we said, it's not really the old firm. Like for them, it should be. Yeah, no, and that's you're it. playing. This is all they got, really. Yeah, what else they got? Playing Brisbane, who's probably the worst they've been in three, four years, mm. and you're probably the best you've been in three, four years. And this is what you tee up: forty-five points and poor football, mm. really poor football. Yeah. Um, I was very unimpressed by what they dished up. Yeah, and, and when I you, think that's it's fair enough. And did you did you mention the injuries? I don't know if you did. To you Brisbane, see, yeah, yeah, so, the injuries, yeah. Like, what's it called? Was it three in the first quarter? Something ridiculous. So McCarthy, yeah, Sasevich pregame, like a late yeah. scratch. Yeah, yeah, very late. And the guy that they had on the bench played in the VFL earlier that day. Yeah, and had Maccas beforehand. How did he? Right. Good shout out to Logan Morris. Shout man. out, shout out Logan Morris. So McCarthy and Gardner, they're mm. saying ACLs, unconfirmed but suspected. Right. That's right. Sasevich out. Mm. Debutant playing and Logan Morris sub. So like. Mm. Probably and, and another and another debutant in um the Breville. Oh, and Answorth. Answorth actually Answorth yeah. yeah, has a concussion. So mm. as depleted as they've been in years, and as mm. poor as they've been in years, mm. and you don't even lay a punch. Yeah, no, that's you're right. That's super poor. Super I poor. Think, um, Hardwick's gonna have to swing the axe a little bit. You know, just not the players over my Super Ghost team. No. You know, but it's yeah, no, it's a bad look, man. Yeah. It's a bad look, and I'm sure. I don't know. I, I didn't expect them to be. At this level, I thought that they'd be properly competing. Well, they're, to be honest with you. and this is the thing I'll take back slightly is they are blooding a lot of youngsters, and we've all been impressed by them. True, true. Maybe that's just the inconsistency this week. They just weren't on or whatever. Yeah, true. But true. Still, mm. I don't know. But the thing is, that's not an excuse for Raul, who had a subpar game. Correct. Took Miller, uh, Anderson. They I don't think got, I don't think any of them really just got bullied a bit. Yeah, I don't think any of them really had a good game. No. You know, and like Witsy did. Witsy did have a big game. He was a monster in the yeah. rock, you know. But and actually, yeah. want to talk a little bit about potential steroids of Zorko and like um, <laughs> yeah. Darcy Wilson. Like we're saying, like how do these guys develop? So yeah, wow. Well, yeah, the Gold Coast, boys. the Gold Coast Academy boys, right? Yeah. Now North's been in the draft for a couple of years now, right? Drafting mm-hmm. guys like Bergman. Mm-hmm. A couple of years in, he looks slightly bigger. Yeah, Archer slightly bigger. Tom yeah. Powell slightly bigger. You look mm-hmm. at Graham. <laughs> it's huge he's man. bigger than mm. most North players right? I know no. he, he looks like LDU physically already Jed Walter you know? I'm not even going to talk about <laughs> how crazy this guy looks yeah. as an 18 year old right mm-hmm. even Jake Rogers who's very slight yeah. he's not a twig no, and no, you can he's... see he's going to get muscle on him pretty quick mm-hmm. and Ethan Reed, for a ruckman mm. to, for a skinny ruck for With, a skinny ruck for, yeah. picked in the first round they should mm. never be playing Games in their first year of footy. No. Should be no. impossible. Yeah. Should be Sam Day, you know, still in there. You but know he looks mean? not that skinny. No, he, he, yeah, he looks, looks fine. Yeah, he does. Yeah. So looks like he belongs there. What is going on in this academy? I don't know. <laughs> Look, uh, we, we talked about this prior to the pod. And my the only explanation I can give, apart from, you know, Asada needing to investigate, is they have been given. So they're in the AFL Academy. They're in the, or, sorry, GWS Gold Coast Academy. Mm. We got there on the third time. Gold Coast Academy, surely that they have like elite gym facilities and that must be it. That's my only explanation because otherwise like, man, yeah, the investigation crazy. required. Don't get me wrong. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm really impressed. But like it's yeah. actually crazy. Yeah. Uh, good on him, man. Good, good on, on him. You know, that's that's some, you know, dedication to the craft, which is a bit difficult over in the you know, party land Gold Coast. True. You True. know, so yeah. Um, I did want to just say one more thing and I had a dig at this group of people. In mm. round zero, the Brisbane okay. fans. Yes. Okay. You know I'm not too impressed with their over singing after a goal, especially when they're winning or like yeah. they have momentum. Like we're singing a second chorus of like Country Road. Like get out yeah, of here. Yeah. I'm really over it. Yeah, that's fair. So that's always annoyed me, right? But they did something even cringier this week. <laughs> Somehow. They, they topped themselves. Mm. They did the wave in the crowd. Uh, uh, yeah. Nah, this isn't the cricket, man. <laughs> This it's is not, not the, the cricket, cricket, you know. Yep. Yeah. Come on. Like, yeah. No, nah, I'm not. I'm that's not, not really. a footy thing. No, nah, I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, I was. I'm, I was quite I'm very much. That's that's off putting. That is very much off putting. Most um, cringe fans in the league, I think, has to go to Brisbane. And you know what yep. is most cringe about it all? Mm-hmm. The second they're a bad team, that's a. Mm. The Gabba will be empty. You're right. No, you're right. Emptier these, than a North game. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because these are this is this is rugby town. They're just jumping along for the for the ride for the wins. Jumping a lot of their fans the are here in Melbourne. Yep. All of their fans, yeah, you know, they're all Fitzroy, Fitzroy here, Fitzroy lads. That's right. You know. So, so that's my little thing, yeah. 
I like it. Nah, nah. Take that's it f- personally if you want. That's a fair call. My only, I'm not, I'm not going to say this is a retort, but I will say at the St. Kilda home game, without the songs afterwards, when you're at the stadium, it feels lifeless. Mm. After a goal and it's just completely dead silent, you're waiting for the bounce and there's no music. Mm. It's shit, to yeah. be honest with you. So I think the songs are necessary. But they overdo it, man. It becomes like it's worse than an NBA game yeah. over there. You know what I mean? Like just don't sing the extra chorus. No, no. That that when the like, ball bounces, I don't want to be hearing much in much else. Yeah, no, exactly. Anyway, um, yeah, no, nah, that's fair. Bit fair call. Cool. Bit of beef. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. I like how look, we always turn like a good performance into something negative about the teams, bro. <laughs> like enjoyers, I'm not sure, bro. I'm a critical thinker. That's it. No, I like it. You're pulling one of my quotes from earlier, man. I like it. There we go. <laughs> Um, all right, that's yeah, about it for the games. Yeah, I think that was. Yeah, we've had a nice little uh, chin wag about all those games. It was a great week of footy. It re- look, and that's why, like, I was kind of, I was talking about it with Dana. I'm, I was disappointed that we weren't going to be able to do a pod this week, but to pull up, to pull one in last minute, and you know, a little surprise pod feels good because it was a good one to talk about. Right. So thank you, Dana, for uh, being being ever present. Well, not ever present, but present this time. <laughs> um, Happy to do it. And you yeah. know what? This week might. Be an equally good round. Let's yeah. go through it. So All right, let's go. First game, Thursday night, Carlton, Melbourne. Yeah. At the G. Huge game. Carlton yeah. can fall out of the eight with a loss. Mm. And you know what? Because Georgie's not here. We're tipping Melbourne, mate. Because Georgie's not here. Or, or, or you, have you got something to say about that? <sighs> I think Carlton will do it. Okay. And my reasoning is this. Yep. Their midfield... While Melbourne's is coming into form, mm-hmm. I think it's just currently a bit more, as George would say, brutal. Yeah. And I think they will get enough going forward mm-hmm. to get your Kernos and Mackay's involved, as good as May and Lever are. Yeah, that's fair. I think Kernos due a bag. Okay. And I'm going to back him in. All right. You know what, what we're going to do this week? This is all your tips this week because you haven't had the, you haven't had the tipping power. Wow. Last month, and I've just been doing whatever so I you want. You can tell me. What I've you been think. I've been writing whatever I want, pretty much. You know, last week, I really wrote whatever I want on the tips. So I'm going to give it all to you, all right. man. Well, I'm, give, I might I might even you know I'm going to do the host duties, and you're going to do the all tipping, right. right? Give your opinion at least after I tip. Yeah, look, but that's my honest thoughts. I think they'll have enough. It's a 50-50 game, honestly. It's a it's a it's a twin. It's a would be great for the pod. For this one. Unfortunately for George, if yeah. George starts to panic again a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, and you're right. You're right. Actually, for the sake of the pod, I'd prefer Melbourne to win. But, but George, um, this is for you, man. Yeah. Happy name day. I'm tipping Carlton. All right. There Let's we go. go. All right. The next game is Geelong versus Port Adelaide in GMHBA Stadium. GMA, GMHBA or not, Geelong. There we go. I, I agree with you, man. Port, Port are a little bit in shambles. They've got yep. a few injuries coming up. They need to sort their shit out. Right? Yep. Next game, Fremantle in Perth versus Sydney. This is an interesting one. It is. Because I did question the Sydney forward line slightly. Mm. Not question. I just putting it out there. Mm. And this is coming up against the. This really is a freer good, defense. This is the freer defense that doesn't allow a hundred points. I'm going to tip Frio. Oh, Fremantle Dokers. They're the Dokers, man. That's if if I um, if you want if you want a pod pick, you know, That's the point of pick. difference. There you go. Um, look. I disagree with you, but you know Fair what? Enough. But I like it. I'll, th- this is your opportunity to go a bit wild because I don't know when you're going to be. I don't know when the next pod with you will be. But anyway, there we go. We're going with Freo. Next one is Hawks versus St. Kilda. It's in Launceston. Yes. And I wasn't too impressed by St. Kilda. Oh. And Hawthorne had a great game. I am still going to tip St. Kilda though. Okay. Respect for Chris. Respect for Chris firstly. Yep. Secondly, I'm questioning Hawthorne's ability to play two really good games in a row. Okay. I yeah, think the one enough. they got their win, mm. Lon, Lonnie or not, I think the Saints will be just a bit too good. Yeah, that's a fair call. And I King like, needs to respond. He's copping a bit of flack. Yeah, and here's his opportunity against a you know undersized, yep. generally undersized, you know Hawthorne defense. Apart yep. from Frost, he's a big boy. Correct. Um, yeah, fair call. Um, Essendon versus GWS at Marvel Stadium. This Deplete, is un- if Tom Green doesn't play and there's no yeah. Cogs, no Tom Green. Yeah, great chance for the Bombers to win. I still think the Giants will win though. Okay, fair. I'm not surprised. I'm sure I knew you were going to do that. Look, just it's, because... Because again, hater. Hater. No, nah, look. <laughs> the Giants, you see their performance against Carlton a few weeks ago mm-hmm. at Marvel. Yeah. They were unlucky, not unlucky to lose. Like Carlton had to play. Mm. It's probably as good as they can play at yeah. times to win that game. I don't think Essendon can hit those heights for long enough. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Gold Coast in Darwin versus uh, North. Uh, you might have skipped a game. 
Did I? Yep. Did I? No, I didn't, bro. Richmond Dogs. I've got look. They're both at the same time. Oh, so right. Sorry. For me, G- Gold Coast comes. This what? is crazy. That is, bro. That is weird, man. Another man, Android v Apple. Jeez. Yeah, I know. Jeez. So All right. So go. we can so, go. We can go. North so we're first. going Darwin first. All right. The Darwin game. So, what's what's your thinking? I'd love to be able to tip North just because Gold Coast mm. doesn't deserve a tip after the performance they had. Yeah. But especially with a dewy ball, our skills are bad enough. Yeah. True. True. We're not going to win that. Yeah, fair enough. So, Gold Coast for that one. Um, So, now, Richmond versus the Bulldogs. Oh, it's got to be... The Dogs have to respond. They do. Surely. Surely. If they do lose, though, man, I think Bevo, he's going to walk, bro. He might have to walk if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tip Richmond with Mm -hmm. all the injuries against the embarrassed Bulldogs outfit. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. All right. So, go over to Marvel Stadium, actually. And this should be at the G. But Collingwood versus West Coast. Harley Reid's, you know, first game against Collingwood should mm. be at the G. Yeah, why is that's weird? Yeah. Um, maybe they just didn't. Ex- maybe because it's a traveling game, they didn't expect much of a crowd. Yeah. But poorly booked, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, yeah. I'll go. Um, I'll go Collingwood. Mm. And then the last game, Adelaide in Adelaide versus Brisbane. That's a tough one, man. This is the hardest one to tip. Mm. Ooh. You know what, Adelaide? Okay, Adelaide. Brisbane right. didn't really impress me. Oh, there you go. Fair enough. Gold that's, Coast was just that bad. That's fair. That's fair. Um, are we doing a gauntlet thing? Nah, because we, we stuffed it up when we did oh. North in the first time. We don't have to do one of those anymore. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I can't be bothered. It's more, too much more to think about and fair enough, fair annoying enough. to edit as well. So, we're not, we're, not, we're not doing it, man. Um, but yeah, there we go. We've gone through our tips. Um, I think we'll, uh, we'll finish it off there unless you've got some concluding comments, Dana. You know? I was looking through my notes in case I missed anything because I wasn't really looking at it. The one thing I didn't really mention, mm-hmm. flowers for Duggan. Flair. Yeah, yeah, you know what? That's, That's just the fair. one comment. I think I touched on everything here, even without looking at it. But the one mm. thing I forgot, flowers for Duggan. Okay, yeah. We're going to end it on a high. Let's end it on that. Flowers for Duggan. Thank you guys very much for listening. Yeah, Dana, welcome back. Good to be yeah. back. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. See you then. West Coast. Put it into the hot spot, to the 50. And Holly Reed! Oh my! Soaring from the heavens! You're wondering if the hype was real? Here's your proof! My 